Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the vlog. So for today we're going to show you how to change the uh, logo that appears at the boot screen on the SYNC 3 system on the Ford Edge. So let's jump inside the car and let's have a look at that. So we're inside the Ford Edge. This has the SYNC 3 system, and as you can see, it's coming up with the ST4 Performance logo. Now, I have changed this from the standard Ford logo to this. I'm going to show you how you can do that too. So there's a few things you're going to need. First, you're going to need a Windows laptop. Secondly, you're going to need one of these cables. And this is an Elm 327 uh, cable. I got this from eBay. And of course, it has the important switch functionality on here. This this is important. So in order to in order to uh, be able to read and write to it uh, to the car, you need it needs to have this switch for multiple different functionalities. So that that is quite important. This the next thing you're going to need, like I said, is you're going to need your Windows laptop. I have a, a HP laptop here. And you're going to have to download a bit of software called Forescan. It is a free download and you will need to uh, request the extended license which gives you a one month or two month trial um, and they send you the, you can download the, the link uh, to install the, the license key onto your laptop. Once that's done, um, we'll then go through the steps uh, in order to do that. So let's get the laptop turned on and then dive in and have a look at what we can do. So, laptop. Oh, so familiar. Windows laptop. Let's uh, get this out. This is one of the computers that kids use, so it has a very secure password. I do not recommend you ever having a password like this on a laptop, but because my kids are, you know, pretty young, this is for them. You ready for this? It's really bad. One, two, three. Ta da! <laughs> I didn't do it, it was the other half. The, the kids are young, they're really young. Okay, right, let's uh, dive in. So let's uh, bring up Forescan. Now this computer does have like every other bit of junk on it known to mankind. Um, Forescan, it's right in the middle of the screen. Well done. Oh, okay, I've already got it running. Now I've already got it running because in the house, I'd done exactly what I said earlier. I'd upgraded the license from the free version, which doesn't allow you to change anything, it just allows you to read error codes, etc., to the extended license, which allows us to do what we're going to do today. So the next thing we're going to do, oh, is not break the laptop, is we're going to take the the Elm uh, box. There we go, that's the one I have here. And of course it has, like I said, the little switch on it, which allows you to read and write to different CAN buses, and that is fairly important. So what we're going to do is, obviously you do this at your own risk. If you break your own car, it's nothing to do with me. <laughs> Again, maybe not the wisest decision I'm going to make with me doing this, but I've done it in the past and I'm quite confident I can do it again. So yeah, let's try not to break the other half's car. Right, so let's plug this in down here. Oosh. Yeah, there's sound effects, right? and the USB end into the laptop. Now, I have done this before, like I said, so... Um, like everything Windows, you plug in the USB and it says it is not recognized. Typical. Okay, so we've got it connected to the car. Let's uh, connect it, so here we go. So we've uh, clicked on the connect to car button here. It's now reading the various modules in the car. There we go. Now it's coming up and asking us uh, if um, our adapter, Elm adapter, has the high speed to medium speed CAN switch. And yes, we have the said switch, so let's switch that over. There we go. So we go, yes, we switched over. Please set it. Well, we just did. Okay. 
and now it's going to continue to read the other modules in the car on the other canvas so off it goes There we go. Would you like to see the profile? Yes, let's, why not? Okay. So, we've got different various options down here. We can see the codes. Uh, you can get graphs up, you can do tests. Um, we can do service procedures. Um, it's quite a little handy tool, this. Um, and programming. So, the one we're after is the APIM uh, module, which is this one here. And we're going to click forward. And it's going to say, please uh, change our switch back. So let's do that. I'll click OK. OK, yes, it is Sync Gen 3. OK. Now it's going to read it all. So as you can see, we have all the different various settings here for Sync. You know, things like we can we can allow uh, these additional buttons for... Oh, nope, not those. We can put the, the heated seat buttons on here and stuff if they're not already on there. Um... So all, all of these functionalities is here. So let's just uh, scroll down. Okay, and then you have the splash screen option here. So on uh, splash screen, you can see it's set to ST. Now if I click edit selected at the bottom here, I can then change it to all of these. So. When we turn into the Vignali, Shelby Mustang, a Lincoln, a Ford Performance logo, uh, the Ford GT logo, which does look pretty cool, but, you know, well, I think it's a bit fetching. I think even the Mustang one's pretty fetching, really, for considering we're, uh, you know, we're in the, uh, oh, a Bronco. Oh, look at that. Um, well, no, it's not definitely not the Bronco. So let's uh, let's go for the Vignali one, since, well, this certainly isn't a... Uh, it certainly isn't a Mustang. We're in the Ford Edge. Uh, once we've done that, we're going to select right down here. And it's going to say what we're actually changing here. And of course, we're going to say OK, or a little tick box saying yes. It's going to write those changes back to the head unit. And the head unit's just going to restart. And when it, com when it comes back online, there we go, Vignali. I'm sure somebody's going to tell me I'm mispronouncing that. Vignali. Vignali, uh, all of the above. There we go. Ta da! So we've got it set to Vignali, so we're just going to click Edit Selected and we're going to change it to the Shelby Mustang just for the shits and giggles and hit right. And it should restart the screen right after I tick the tick box on. There we go. And there we go, it reboots. And there we have it. Now because this isn't a Shelby, clearly, we're going to change it back to the Ford ST1 just because that's the one I prefer. And again, head unit is rebooting, and then back to the ST logo. There we have it, so that's how you change the screen on the head unit on the any Ford really with Sync 3. So if you have any problems or any more comments, please comment down below. Do remember to like and subscribe. Your comments obviously do help us out. So until the next one, see you then.